Hello, I'm Tom Trombley, the Deputy Director of the Castle Museum of Saginaw County History. The program that follows is called A Brief History of Saginaw and is a collection of historic photographs of the community. I think you'll really enjoy it. If you find this interesting, please come and visit the Castle Museum of Saginaw County History located in the Castle Building in downtown Saginaw. Saginaw has a rich and fascinating history. It's been said that a photograph is worth a thousand words. I think you'll find that the photographs that follows will give you a brief introduction to Saginaw's history in the 19th through the early 20th century. The region had long been settled by Native Americans. Evidence of their settlement in the region goes back thousands of years. These photographs really document the settlement of the area after Europeans started coming to the area. And this is the site of Saginaw City Hall in the mid-19th century. I think it looks a lot different than it does today. The city was to grow tremendously throughout the 19th and 20th century. Here the city is looking at the Central Business District in a bird's eye view in the from the 1880s. And here's the area um, in the early 20th century. And an aerial photograph of um, the Business District taken in the 1920s. A fort was established on the west side of the river in the 1820s. It was only short-lived. And other attempts through the 1830s to establish a communi permanent community in Saginaw had been mm, somewhat less successful. Settlement really started and growth really started in the 1850s and in the post-Civil War boom. This is Genesee Avenue in the 1860s. This is Jefferson Avenue, also in the 1860s. But it was really in the post-Civil War period that Saginaw really started to thrive. This is Court Street, about 1890. And this is um, Washington Avenue in the post-Civil War period. Genesee Avenue at the turn of the century. The secret behind this really um, tremendous growth in the years following the Civil War in the 1860s, 70s, and 80s was Saginaw's position on the river and its connection to the Great Pine Forest of Michigan. Saginaw was to become, in the 1870s and 80s, the lumber capital of the world and it really supplied the lumber that would rebuild Chicago after the Great Fire and really to supply the lumber necessary for the United States' great expansion after the Civil War. These are wharves along the river in the 1880s. Of course, Lumbering also fostered um, the development of numerous other industries and businesses, um, some of them directly related to lumbering. This is Edward Germain's planing mill, but also um, created a number of related businesses, um, such as Morley Brothers, which had, was to become the largest wholesale hardware company uh, east of the Rocky Mountains and numerous other businesses thrived throughout the community. This is um, the Central Business District about 1890. There were stores throughout the community. This is Ippel's department store on Court in Michigan about 1890. They're having a, a great sale in this photograph. And numerous other dry goods and businesses. This is the Bancroft Hotel during a snowstorm. Of course, we never have bad weather in Saginaw. Another snowstorm and capturing more breaktail businesses, these along Court Street on the west side of the river. And of course, they were businesses that would grow and thrive throughout the 19th and 20th centuries. The Sagna triumphed over numerous disasters. Some of the major ones were a huge fire on May 20th, 1893. This is um, the Bristol Street Bridge, which is was located where the current Holland Avenue Bridge was, um, which was partially destroyed during the fire. 
and this is a view from the roof of St. Mary's Hospital in the days after the fire, when you can see the destruction that destroyed over 250 homes. There were numerous floods in Sagna throughout the 19th and early 20th centuries. Of course, Sagna, much of it was a marsh that had been filled in and um, flooded frequently. This is in the 1870s and another flood in 1912 on this show's Genesee Avenue. The river was a source of flooding, but it also was the source of livelihood for the community of Saginaw. It was the river that decided where the city would be located. It gave access to the great pine forests of northern Michigan, but also gave access to the Great Lakes and great livelihood. And following the river was development. This is a wharf um, in the 1870s. These are wharves in the early 20th century, just showing the tremendous amount of river traffic that went through Saginaw. A similar view, um, probably about the turn of the century. And this is a view from the late teens of the downtown business district showing the importance of the river and shipping in the community throughout well into the 20th century. Just another view of the river, the Genesee Avenue Bridge, looking towards the central business district with the Second National Bank building, or it's now known as the First Merit Building. The river, um, was bridged by several bridges, one of them being the Court Street Bridge. This is looking um, east, and that's the same bridge looking west towards the business district. Saginaw was originally several smaller communities. The two major communities were Saginaw City and East Saginaw. The two were joined together in 1889. The cover of this book book clearly denotes that Saginaw was two separate communities. It was published in 1889 and shows the two communities as the Saginaw, East Saginaw and Saginaw City. The position of Saginaw City Hall, and this is the first city hall for the combined Saginaw, um, was stipulated by the consolidation. It was to be located halfway between the two business districts. The current city hall was constructed after this building burned in the 1930s and is located on the same site. When lumbering started after the Civil War, it was predicted there would be enough timber to last and the forest to last for over a century. This proved to be inaccurate, and within a generation, the majority of the trees had been cut and Saginaw had to reinvent itself. At first, Saginaw, in the 1890s, Saginaw, the city of Saginaw's population declined. In fact, between 1890 and 1900, it declined by 10%. And Saginaw reinvented itself as an industrial center, and there was a great emphasis on coal mining. There were more coal mines in the county of Saginaw than any other county in the state of Michigan. Numerous other industries were started. This is a piano factory. There were a number of piano factories in Saginaw. It wasn't until the teens and 20s that Saginaw became an automotive manufacturing center and really specialized in the development of automotive parts. Actually, there had been attempts to develop um, and produce entire cars in Saginaw. This was Jackson Church and Wilcox um, about 1917, which would become Saginaw Steering Gear, which would become part of General Motors Corporation, and which is today Next Year Corporation. Saginaw thrived as, an in, as a lumbering town, then an industrial center, but it's always had a very strong arts community. Um, just some of the venues for performing arts, in the 1880s, the Academy of Music was constructed on Washington Avenue. In the early 20th century, Saginaw's municipal auditorium, called the Saginaw Auditorium on Washington Avenue, was constructed. Um, there were numer numerous theaters in the community. This is the Franklin Theater, located on Franklin Street, which um, was a vaudeville house and became a motion picture theater. Of course, the Temple Theater, constructed in, in the 1920s, which continues today as a performing arts center. 
the Masonic Temple, um, which also had space for performances located on Washington Avenue. And of course, there have always been a number of clubs and organizations. This is the Saginaw Club and numerous parks throughout the community. This is Jeffers Fountain and Park, which has recently been restored, which is very near the Castle Museum. Um, this is another view of the park in the 1920s. Saginaw has a number of cemeteries. This is the chapel in Forest Lawn Cemetery. Um, Forest Lawn and the other cemeteries really are great places to learn about some of the people that have made Saginaw really thrive and help to record the history of the community. The community has grown and changed as the community has changed. And I thought I would just um, share with you just um, one location throughout time. This is Saginaw's Courthouse Square. The current governmental center is located where the courthouse has been located since the founding of the county in the 1830s. Um, this is a post-Civil War view of the courthouse. Another view of the original courthouse. A closer view of the 1838 courthouse. The 1880s courthouse. And here's the 1880s courthouse um, behind the steel of the building which is on Michigan Avenue that replaced it. During this brief program, we focused on the physical development of the community. However, it's really reflective of the story of the people who have made Saginaw thrive and continue to make thr Saginaw thrive. It's a very special place. This is a photograph of the Goodrich Brothers, um, the African-American photographers who captured the development of the community from 1862 to 1922. People continue to shape Saginaw and make it a vibrant and special place. As you explore Saginaw, we hope you'll keep what you've seen in these historic photographs in mind and see how the layers of history are evident in Saginaw and the things that have made Saginaw the community that it is today.